Hey Vault Hunter, it's Stud Doogie here with a short video this time, and this video is a follow-up video to the uh, Malawan takedown video that I did, I think it was last night or the day before. Um, so I want to give a shout out to Stephen Barnum who left a comment on uh, that video asking how did we know that the comm was going to get nerfed. And so that question tells me that I did not do a particularly good job in explaining some of the concepts in the video uh, because I really wasn't saying anything about the comm being nerfed. So Stephen, there is no nerf to the comm. Uh, when I was talking about nerf, what I was referring to is what's going to be happening with the Maliwan takedown event starting December 31st and ending January 16th. The takedown raid will scale to party size. So right now, uh, if you go into the raid, it is scaled to four player difficulty regardless of party size. Uh, come December 31st, it's going to start scaling it based on party size. So that means during that time period, uh, it's no longer possible to solo the raid at four player difficulty unless you bring three other teammates and they just stand around while you run ahead and do everything. Uh, so that's why it's, that's why I'm calling it a nerf because it's just not straightforward in terms of just getting in there and doing it on the hardest possible difficulty by yourself. So uh, hopefully that clears that up for you. I um, And since I'm at it, I want to clear up a couple of things or just make sure that I'm being uh, unambiguous about a couple of things. In, in particular, I want to talk about the comm real quick. Uh, the the new comm, the sea and dead comm. And when I, when I rewatched the video, or at least the first, the, the description part of the build and that stuff, and I noticed that I conflated some of the behavior of the comm with the behavior of the class. Uh, of the skill tree and if you know Zane then you know it, you, it made perfect sense to you but if you're probably if you're new to Zane and you don't really understand how all the skills work yet then it was probably confusing so I just want to clear a couple things up so what the comm really is is it takes two of the skills or two of the behavior of skills in the hitman tree and copies them and puts them in the form of the comm now the two skills that it's copying is the capstone skill, seeing red, and uh, it's it's not an exact copy because seeing red, the way it works is when you activate any action skill, you also automatically activate all of your kill skills. So the requirement is you activate action skill. The consequence is kill skill get activated. But on the com, you can activate kill skills not by activating action skills, but by shooting enemies. So when you shoot an enemy, you have a chance to activate all your your kill skill, right? So it's not a a one to one perfect copy, but it 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 mimics the spirit of that action skill. The next one is death follows close, and again, it's not a perfect copy because death follows close has two bonuses. You get a 25% kill skill bonus, and you get a 7% kill skill duration. The comm only copies the 25% kill skill bonus. So it's not as if if you put these comm on, it means that you have death follows close or it means that you have seeing red. You know, there are probably still legitimate reasons, especially for death follows close, to still pick it even if you have the comm. I can't really think of a good reason for seeing red, but that's me. It's your life. Do with it as you will. So hopefully that clears up any confusion about how the comm works. The final thing I want to touch on is in the raid, um, we basically achieved, well, let's call it a simulation of calm, cool, and collected in that we had our action skills up pretty much all the times without ever actually specking into calm, cool, collected. Now, it's important to note that that behavior will not be consistent everywhere. The reason why we were able to do it in the raid is a couple things. The first thing is that the raid has high densities of enemy spawn, right? Because if we take a look again at what the comm says, it says whenever Zane damages an enemy with his weapon, he has a chance to automatically activate all of his kill skills. I want to say the word, that's the key word there, a chance. So there's some probability, some number, uh, chance that you shoot around at an enemy and you make contact with an enemy that contact can proc the uh the the, the legendary ability of this comm which is to activate all of your your kill skills so this means that when you have a lot of enemies to shoot your chance goes up 
And if you pair that with weapons where when you shoot one enemy, it shoots multiple enemies for you, your chance goes up even more. So the combination of weapons like the Brainstormer, which whenever you shoot an enemy and their enemies are in, in a you know pretty wide area, it has these electrical tendrils that reaches out and does, does damage to the other enemy that you're not shooting. That electrical damage counts as weapon damage insofar as the comm is concerned. All the weapons that is good for this is the Dictator because it has that wide spread, right? So if we look at our Dictator here, we see it's like shooting three bullets at a time. It's more than three because there's multiple rounds in each path. And then you do that, so you can imagine a bunch of enemies you're shooting at them. The probability of proccing the legendary effect of the comm goes up. So it's a combination of bullet of uh, enemy density and weapons that you can shoot more than one enemy at a time that's going to make it work. So another option available to us is a uh, artifact called uh, the electric banjo and the electric banjo its special ability is that whenever you shoot an enemy there's a 20% chance that it procs a electrical tendrils similar to the one that you get from the brainstormer. So those if you meet those conditions then you can simulate the calm cool collected effect that we had going on in the raid um, versus if you just if you went into a sparse zone with the build it's just not going to work the same so I just want you to be aware of that you know in case you just say you take it into a proving grounds one of the, the the less dense ones and you're like why is my action skill up all the time you need to a make sure that there's a high density of enemies and B, you have a weapon where you can shoot multiple enemies at the same time. Um, just go into my bank here real quick and show you some other options. Any of the ricochet rounds that has more than one bullet is a good option here. Uh, I think I have a couple that I can point out. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I thought I had some Lucian's Call in here. Lucian's Call is a good choice. I don't see it right now. Maybe I passed it. Maybe I put it in the bank. Oh, here it is. So Lucian's Call is a good choice. Rowan's Call uh, is another good one because it ricochets multiple bullets. The King and Queen's Call pistols, good options. Um, Kill of the Wisp, another good option because it, it generates tendrils. Um, yeah, so anything that where you can where you can do d shoot one enemy or damage a group of enemies with a single shot, you're going to be know able to keep your action skill going if and only if you have specced into good misfortune all right that was it I'm sorry for any confusion that I caused and hopefully this cleared uh, everything up for you guys I'll catch you guys in the next one